Uh oh. Hold on, my Instagram ain't working. Instagram says checking. Oh, there you go. All right. I think that's it. I think we lied. Let me see. Hi, 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 everybody. Hi. All right. I'm just making sure all the cameras are on, all the cameras are working. They are. What's up? What's shaking? Everybody good? Everybody good, son? Um, let's get something to drink. Something like some water or something. Or a fresco or something. Let me, me, let me get a cup. You know, since I'm, since I'm not having alcohol for obvious reasons, right? The least we can do is make a, just a Diet Coke or something. Let me see. There we go. All right, we have some ice. Oh, sorry, Periscope. There we go. All right, and then I have a Diet Coke. <laughs> the heavy stuff, watch out, okay? Watch out. All right, let's go. We got a lot of work to do tonight. Um, it's been a while since I've been cooking live, but um, it's good to see everybody. Hopefully you're ready to rock and roll and have a good time. So all the new people, there's a lot of new people. What's up to all the new people? Come on in, have a seat, get comfortable, and um, we're going to have a good time, okay? All right, come on in, get comfortable, have a seat, and let's have a good time. All right, let's do this. Before we fry some fish... Um, let me tell you what I found. Well, you know what? I didn't find it. Instacart found it. Okay? I didn't find it. Instacart. They found it. F-O-U-N-T. They found it. Uh, smoked turkey tails. All right? These things are like gold. I always tell you about smoked turkey tails. Y'all be like, where you get them from? I be like, the grocery store. But I do realize that if you don't live Midwest or South, it may be hard to find smoked turkey tails, right? Um, but a turkey wing could work, a uh, turkey drumstick, um, you know, the ham hock, the pigtail, all that is good in here, okay? Um, so I'm going to dump these in here. The only thing is, every once in a while, if you mind it, it might be a little um, feather duct, you know, where the feathers come out of. I mean, it is a it is a turkey. So you look for them, and you get you a little piece of paper towel like this, and you just sort of come around, see, and you just pull it out. It's easier to do it with a paper towel. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't mind them that much, but for some people, it grosses them out. So just get in here, look at it where it comes out, and then you just get a towel and you can just pull it out and it's fine. It's not even that big of a deal. Um, again, I don't mind it as much because what will happen is that these are gonna break down as they cook anyway. And when they break down, you know, you can just pull them out if you see one. But I mean, it's a turkey. Turkeys have feathers, right? Right, okay? So it is what it is personally see you just you just wiggle it out and they come out you know if if again if this is something that bothers you um, it don't bother me okay it don't bother me now if you've never had a turkey tail I don't know you don't know what you're missing there's something about a smoked turkey tail in beans like any place 
that you would normally use smoked meat, like a ham hock or um, some sort of smoked product, smoked meat product, I replace it with turkey tails because when the turkey tails cook, they're fantastic. They cook down, they have a lot of good fat, a lot of good flavor in them. Um, the meat in the turkey tail is, I mean, to be honest, it's like some of the best you've ever had. It's, it's like succulent and juicy, and I'm getting excited just thinking about it, okay? So I put, um, you know, some water in here. Um, I tend, I tend to overdo it on the water. So I'm gonna pour some water out. All right, um, and then, you know, if you are down with the picking your collard greens, then listen, you pick and you go right in here. I'm using fresh picked collard greens that somebody else picked from somebody else's farm, okay? Uh, triple washed, if you wanna wash yours a fourth time, you know, that's fine. You do that, okay? Um, and I don't have nothing to say about nothing, okay? Wash until you can't wash no more, all right? But these are clean, triple wash, ready to go, and that's why I buy them. And that's why they also cost a little more money, okay? The other ones, they be, you remember when collard greens was about 29 cents a pound? I don't know how much they cost, but they ain't 29 cents a pound. These cost a little more. And that's fine. I'm willing to pay a little more. Okay, so collard greens, washed, clean, chopped, all right, into an instant pot with smoked turkey tail. It's about to go down, okay? All right, let's drop this in the instant pot. Put the lid on. Wait, first of all, make sure this is set to seal, okay? Not, you know, kiss from a rose. Not that. It's a seal. You have to make sure it's on there. Okay. All right. And then we're going to put this on pressure. Let's see. Pressure cook. Oh, this say like 45. So we took about 45 minutes. It's like, so I think it's probably best that we start moving. Okay. Now, I want you to get you a pot like this here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? What my grandma would do. Okay, get you a cast iron skillet. Don't get no pot, that's really bougie. That's not how we cook around here. Get you a skillet, cast iron, and you need a skillet that's been through the fire and the flood. It's been broken into pieces, seen lightning flashing from above. But through it all, I remember that the skillet loves me and he told me that he cares. And this skillet will never put more on you than you are able to bear. You need your skillet that's been through the middle passage, okay? This skillet, this skillet reeks of trial and tribulation. This skillet reeks of uh, jubilee and his step. This, this got what you need, okay? You need one of these, all right? Then we'll take you a little bit of butter. We ain't gonna take that much. For real. The equivalent's about a stick of butter. Okay? That's about a stick. That's about a stick. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's. It's not a stick. It's going to be a stick today. Okay? Uh, put this in the oven and let this melt down. Okay? Let's do that. All right, first and foremost, I want you to get you a bowl. And you know what's about to happen, okay? Let's go. I need a, um, you know, I need a measuring cup. I don't have one. So I'm going to eyeball it, okay? I'm going to eyeball a cup, a cup, a cup, okay? That's about a cup of sugar, okay? We're going to eyeball the date. That's about a cup of flour, 
Shut up. Fuck up. Okay, we eyeball it. You know how you know how a cup look. Let me find me some um cornmeal. Hold on. Here you go. That's some baking powder. Now let me tell you, if you don't have cornmeal, but you got some grits, you can use that too. Okay? That's a little something. That's a little something I do sometimes when I don't really have a cornmeal. I put a little grits in here. It don't and nobody gonna know. You see what I'm saying? Who who gonna know? Nobody. Okay? Okay, come on. We're gonna put our cornmeal about a cup. Now this is Alabama white cornmeal. Oh, oh, that's that's more. Too much. Hold on. That's a little more than a cup. You know the gravity had got hold. <laughs> that's a little more. Listen, that's a little more than a cup. Gravity had got hold of the bag, and the devil, the devil is busy. Okay, devil is busy. Don't let him win. Uh uh. That now that's about a cup ish. <laughs> that's about a cup okay it's about a cup it's gonna be a cup today shit okay now we need some baking powder in here it's gonna be the best cornbread wait till I get done you just wait okay you know you need a good amount of baking powder like that okay then we gotta put a little salt in this because anytime you bake anytime you bake anything you want to put you let me check this out hold on let me make sure yeah, I'm just saying this was getting hot Let me see. Pressure cook on. Pressure level. Oh. I'm, I'm, you know, the instant pot ain't my friend. I'm on the head go beep. That like that. Okay. All right, this I say salt, didn't I? I say salt. Um, you know the housekeeper came and cleaned up, and I don't really know where she put the salt. Uh, hold on one second, y'all. I got some. I just don't know where it's in. Yep. Let's look for it. Oh, here go, right here. I told you. She put it up, and I didn't know where she put it. She put it down here. She didn't know. Okay. A pinch, what I say, a pinch of salt? Put you a pinch of salt in your cornbread mix. Okay. So this is it, the dry ingredient. We got a cup of flour. Use your imagination. A cup of flour, a cup of cornmeal. Okay. A cup of sugar. It's a cup. It's in there. Okay. Uh, some salt and some baking powder. Not baking soda. You want it to rise. Okay. Not spread. So baking powder. So you mix that up. That's your dry ingredients. Okay. Now, let's add in the wet ingredients. I got to get the wet ingredients though. I'm sorry, I don't have nothing ready. You know, this ain't, um, this is a very low budget child. This is a very low budget performance. If you, if you upset because ain't nothing ready, you could cash at me, dollar sign Darius Cooks, and we get us a little piece of, um, budget for a little production or something. Don't use this. This, this expired on, uh, June 29th. Put that in the trash, okay? Let me see what else we got. I know we got something they really gonna use. 
I don't know what, but we got something. Let's see what we got. Let me see what I got around this kitchen. Okay, I got some. What's the date on this? Used through August 15th. Okay, look what I got. I got me a little half and half. You got to use what you have. When Moses was trying to fight the battle, and Moses was going up, he was having a hard time. Uh, Pharaoh and them was behind him. Oh, this heavy cream. This, no, I got a half and half. Pharaoh and them was behind him, you see? And you know what happened? The Red Sea was in front of him. And it was, a, it was rough. It was rough on him. And the Lord said, use what's in your hand. I already gave you what you need. So we're going to put this half and half in here because I don't have no more buttermilk. Okay? So we're going to throw us in. We're going to, we're going to, look. We're going to throw in a little vinegar. Okay? We're about to make, we're about to make some buttermilk. Okay? Wash your day, no soap. It's all right. Put you a little vinegar in your in your half and half. What we got? Buttermilk. Amen. Okay. Vegans do it all the time. Okay. Now, uh, dry ingredient. Go and crack you two eggs in there. Okay. One. Two. All right, there's two eggs you're going to crack and put. All right. Now we have to find that butter. Where that butter go? Oh, it's in the refrigerator. I mean, it's in the thing. Let me get a towel. Because it's hot, okay? You want to melt you about a stick or so of butter. A stick or so. See that been melted. That's hot. Okay. That's hot. This is what we're gonna do. Let's mix our eggs in here first a little bit. Okay. Then you really want to let this sit for uh a little bit. Okay. See how it already got thick on us like that? You let it sit for about five minutes. Use your imagination. It's been five minutes. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit of milk in there. I mean, oh look, see, look how clumpy it is. See that? You see that? It's real clumpy. That's what the that's what the uh, vinegar does. Play with me if you want to. Okay? And then I'm going to take my one stick or so of melted butter and throw that in there. And then the reason I only put a little bit of um, buttermilk in here is because you can always add more buttermilk. You just can't take it out. So I'm looking for something that look almost like pancake batter a little bit, you see? And so that's why I didn't put that much in here because I don't know how much I need, okay? This is how you do it. And let me tell you something, this is gonna be the best cornbread you ever had. Jippy who? No. Look at me. Don't tell me I did this right. Come on, eyeball. I done eyeballed it perfectly. Hold on, let me see. I might need a little, a, a touch more. Let me see. No, come on. You see how I did this? This is what happened when you got it in your, when it's in your blood, okay? This is what happened. Okay, so you got this nice, smooth, see that? Okay, that's perfect. You wanna take your cornbread batter in the same hot skillet, and you're gonna pour your cornbread batter right into your uh your skillet like this see and it's best if you use cast iron okay and then you know you smooth it out a little bit like that okay now i'm gonna wash that bowl out because that's the same bowl i'm gonna use to season my fish then put this in the oven <laughs> Put that in the oven and we're gonna watch out for it 
and make sure it's all good. Okay, that is how you make buttermilk cornbread. Okay, that's how we're gonna make our buttermilk. I know that the buttermilk didn't come from the store, but that's all right. Okay, that is our buttermilk cornbread. Y'all playing. Okay, don't act like you had everything you need growing up. Sometimes you gotta improvise. And what do we do? We improvise. By the way, the cookbooks are back in stock. So if you need a copy of any cookbook, Stories from Our Grandmother's Kitchen, Everyday Keto, or Vegan But With Soul, you can get that by going to shopdariuscooks.com. And uh, in about a week and a half, Carolina Pound Cake Company will be up and running, okay? About a week and a half. Talk amongst yourself while I wash this bowl out. Yes, I have other bowls, but do I want to get them dirty? No. So we're going to use what we got. Okay, we're going to put um, this right here. Let me grab, I got a sharp knife somewhere around here. Hold on. Here you go. This is my good knife. Somebody sent this, somebody sent me this knife to my mailbox. I don't even know who it was. It didn't have anything attached to it. No, uh, no, it, no note or anything. So whoever sent me these set of knives, if you're watching. If you're watching, thank you. Okay, okay, catfish is a delicacy that I love, okay? I know some people don't really feature the catfish like that, but I am in love with catfish, okay? So I have a couple of fillets. Let me see, one, two, how many in here? Three. Okay, so I got three fillets. I'm going to save this other one for later. Fillet, fillet, save it there. Tomato, tomato. All right, and uh, you could fry the whole thing if you have a, you know, a contraption big enough. But you know, anybody got time for that. So what I do is I just cut my fillets in half, but on a bias like this, you see? So this is a little easier to maintain to work with, to deal with, things like that, okay? So, I'm gonna take my catfish, and you, you could do this with any fish. It doesn't have to be catfish, but you know, there's something about all piece of catfish that I just happen to love. My grandmama loved catfish. My family loved catfish. I'm from Chicago. How could you not love catfish? It's what we eat, okay? Catfish, you go down to JJ's, okay? You go down to sharks, or you go down to whales. My favorite one is the one over there on Madison and Laverne. 773-921-0889. You call your order in, and you say, let me get a catfish and uh, chicken wing combo, okay? Cat with catfish chicken wing combo with extra lemon pepper and extra mild sauce. But you got to go over there before the sun set, because if not, they, they kill you. They shoot over there. So, okay, be careful. Okay, I just rinsed off the fish real good. You see? All right, let me rinse it off a little more. Pull this extra water off. And let's go and grab some seasoning for the fish. Give me a second. Let me go grab, grab the seasoning. You know what we ain't using no more? Huh. Okay. You know what we ain't using no more? All right. I wish to hell I would use it. And you know, I used to love, I think I have some that's not by that one brand. Let me see if I got some in. Oh, I do, I got some. Mm-hmm. I got a little piece. Sure do. Okay, we're gonna use Sazon by Badia, okay? I don't know what Badia means, 
but it must mean uh, we down for the people and we not stupid enough to uh, get on national television and jeopardize our whole brand by supporting an idiot, okay? That's, that must mean what that one word mean in English, okay? All right, now, the catfish, this is a blank canvas. So we're going to paint an amazing picture on the blank canvas, okay? All right. First of all, we got some Sazon Tropical by Badia, who we use now, okay? So I don't know who Goya is no more. They done lost me, all right? Okay, Sazon N. Okay, and this is the kind that has no MSG. I know y'all be so worried about my health, you know? Y'all do. Y'all be, you can't eat that, you're gonna die. This has no MSG, FYI, okay? So you can really let your, uh, let your soul glow with that one, okay? Along with that, I got a little bit of, not new bay, but I got a little bit of old bay in here, okay? I just feel like old bay and seafood, especially catfish, is really, really good together. Um, be careful, I got a little piece of, um, <laughs> a little piece of Tony Satchery's Creole seasoning. It's got a lot of salt in it, so be careful, okay? Uh, you got to cover it up. Every time you use Tony's, it make you sneeze. Don't ask me why. I don't know what's in here, but I don't want to be sneezing, so, okay? Put you a mask on and go for it. All right, complete seasoning. This is the new adobo, okay? Quiet as it's kept between you and me. When I was on TikTok, I would say adobo. And some of y'all would be like, oh, that's adobo. And some of y'all be like, why do he keep calling complete seasoning adobo? He's an idiot. I know, use your imagination. It's social media, okay? Use your imagination. It's social media, people. Okay, a little piece of onion powder. A little piece of garlic powder. I ain't got, the, I ain't got that much garlic powder left. Ooh, a little low on that. And I got a little piece of dry fennel, because that's what I like, okay? And then, you know, we're going to put a little piece of, um, I got to put a little more salt in here because I'm afraid that I don't have enough salt. And the one thing I hate is a bland, I'm just going to do a pinch. I hate a bland piece of fish, you know, I really do. And then I'm going to throw in some uh, black pepper, fresh, uh, great. Yours ain't got to be fresh. Use what you got. Okay. Fresh cracked black pepper. Now this was a blank canvas. That's what this was. But now, this is fin to be, fin to be, <clears throat> finger licking good. Okay, by the time we get done with this, oh, let me tell you something, ain't no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided <coughs> To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. This catfish is seasoned for the gods. This catfish is seasoned. For the gods, this catfish is seasoned. For the gods, we gon' eat good. We gon' eat good. Okay. Now, if I was smart, I would have made a little extra buttermilk. But that's all right. We gonna act like this is buttermilk. From somebody's farm. Put you a little butter, put you a little buttermilk in here. Okay, we're gonna act like this is buttermilk. Just to sort of 
combine all the seasonings. Let me let me let me give you a close up so you can see. This is on um, Facebook. Hi Facebook. Okay. This is um oh look at Instagram. There's a lot of y'all on Instagram child. This is YouTube, YouTube, Church of God in Christ. What's up, TikTok? You don't stop. I'll post a new video tomorrow, I promise. Um, Periscope and then my personal Facebook. Okay? I'm gonna post, I'm gonna post a new TikTok video tomorrow. Don't ask me what it's gonna be. Cause I don't know yet. But I know I've been slipping the last couple of days. And I've been busy. Time on my hand. Powder water. Okay, we're gonna heat this pot of water up. Go with me. Come on and go with me. Hey. Oh, let me stop. I don't own the rights to that music, and the last thing I need is my stuff suspended. Okay. Okay, come on. Put your put the water on. Alright, we're gonna make a little cheese and macaroni. Let me see what I got over here. We're going to make a little cheese and macaroni. Okay, and really, it don't really even matter what cheese you use. Just whatever. It don't really matter. I was on Instacart. This is what they had. They had triple creamy melt triple cheddar with a touch of Philadelphia cream cheese. That can't be that bad. This is Kraft mozzarella. It probably ain't real mozzarella, but it's going to work for what we need it. And this is no RBST hormone. Something burning. Hold on. Ooh, maybe it's not. I thought I smelled something burning. Oh, what's these collard greens behind me? Um, this is finely shredded sharp cheddar. Use whatever you have. I really didn't have much, okay? So I'm using what I have, which really ain't, it ain't a whole lot. Okay. Let me put this fire on this one. And we're going to make our sauce. Okay, y'all seem to have a hard time with this, and we've been making this macaroni and cheese for years. Okay, we've been making this version of the mac and cheese for a long, 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 long time. Take you a little butter, a couple of tablespoons. Okay, we're gonna put that little bit of butter. A little more. Okay. We're gonna put that little bit of butter down to um a pot. Simple. This is not this ain't that hard, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a whisk. So you gotta have the right equipment to do the job. This is a whisk. We're gonna whisk in all-purpose flour into the melted butter. What that's called? A roux. But here's the thing. You gotta have a light skin roux, people. Okay? You gotta have a light skin roux. You cannot have a dark skin roux. Okay? So we put an equal parts butter and flour into this skillet. I mean, into this, um, what you call that? This pot. And we're gonna, we're gonna whisk it real good. The reason you need a whisk, so you can get rid of all the lumps. And you act like you're really doing something when you get rid of the lumps. You act, I mean, you're really doing something. You see what I'm saying? Like you really is, I mean, I mean, you you hell's kitchen. You feel me? You you down to the the network, all right? They can't they can't mess with you, okay? On this one, so you whisk together. Okay, 
Okay, you whisk it together, and then you only cook it for like a few minutes, like this. If you go further than this, it's gonna be too dark skin, and then you got to make gumbo or something. All right, I'm a, I'm a whisk. I'm gonna pour in the half and half from somebody's farm and whisk it together at the same time. What I got me? A white sauce, huh? What I got me? A white sauce. Now, here's the thing though. We gotta season this. Okay? We gotta season. I'm gonna make sure, make sure it's not clumping up on me. Okay, we good. We gotta season this. Let me run to the cabinet and get a few more things beside my salt. Hold the line, please. Thank you. We got nowhere to go nowhere. We on quarantine. We on quarantine. You ain't got nowhere to go, nowhere to go. Cause we all on quarantine together. Okay. Now this is gonna go quick, so be careful, all right? Keep stirring and whatnot. Okay, first things first, I got a little smoked paprika, okay? We're gonna put a little smoked paprika down to situation. I got a little ground white pepper. Hold on, see this starting to get too, it's starting to really, Starting to really boil. We'll put this on low. Okay. Let me let me whisk in my white pepper. Oh yes. Oh yes. I'm gonna take this off the heat. I'm taking it off the heat. This let me show you how thick it done got. Let me find me a spoon so I can show you. Look how quick this is. Look at this. You see that? Just that fast. As long as it coats the back of the spoon like this, and you can do a line and it stays separated like that, oh, we good. We cook it, all right? Now, what I put in here? Paprika, smoke, and white pepper. You put your little salt, little kosher salt, and got to go in there. Fresh cracked. Black pepper to go with the white pepper. Oh, look, let me show you what's happening behind me. Now, listen, I have two golden rules when it comes to cooking this pasta, okay? You can use whatever kind of pasta you want. I'm using regular elbows today, but I do have two golden rules. Always over salt the water and undercook the pasta. Always. Let me say that again. That's in the Bible. Over salt the water and undercook the pasta, okay? The reason you wanna over salt the water is because you really want whatever is in the water gets absorbed into the pasta. If there's no flavor in the water, what the Bible say? There's no flavor in the pasta. Amen. Okay? And then the reason that you want to undercook it, you would think it's sort of self-explanatory, but the reason you want to undercook the pasta is because we're about to put the pasta into the oven for a second time. And the crazy part about it is that if you overcook the pasta while you're boiling it, and then overcook the pasta in the oven, it's a mess. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to eat like that. It's not what I want to eat, okay? This is some uh, a little sculpture of onion powder, okay? And a little sculpture of garlic powder. 
That's the key right there. Okay, a little scotch of onion powder, a little scotch of garlic powder, all right? That's the key for what you need. Hold on one second. Make sure everything's all right over here. Oh, we good. All right, you give that a stir. And then I'm going to add in some sour cream. Because the sour cream is going to keep it nice and moist. You feel me? I like the, the addition of sour cream. That's like a cup of sour cream. Okay. Now, let's taste this. Because the problem is, if it don't taste good now, it ain't going to taste good later. So let's see if we need to add a little more salt or anything to our, our white sauce. Mm. Oh, God. Mm -mm. That's amazing. That needs nothing. It's the perfect amount of salt. All those seasonings. Can y'all see this? Can y'all see? Let me see if I can show you. So you get an opportunity to see the consistency of what we have. I'm going to go camera to camera. That way you can just sort of see the consistency of this sauce. See, it's like thick, but not terribly thick. It'll be nice and creamy. And you know it's gonna help real good when you add the cheese and the pasta and the whole bit. You see that? Okay, nice and creamy, all right? So that's perfect. Not to waste this, let me see. Oh, that's good, oh, hold on. I need a bowl so I can get ready to mix the whole mac and cheese together. Give me a second. And I got a nice clear bowl. That way everybody can see. I smell this cornbread. Let me check on my cornbread. Let me just make sure I ain't burning nothing because I can smell it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, cornbread doing good. Let me check on my pasta. See, look. See, look. Once the pasta is al dente like this, perfect. Take it out. Take it out. Drain the pasta. Drain your pasta, okay? Because the last thing you want to do is overcook this. You want it to still have a little bit of a, a bite to it when you, when you go for it, okay? Okay, let's do it. Let's add in a little bit of pasta. Let's add in some of the sauce. I'm gonna show you. I know. I know you want to see. I'm gonna show you in one second. Hold on. I just want to make sure I'm making it nice and moist. Okay. So in here is just the pasta and the bechamel, and then I'm going to add the cheese. Okay, this is sharp cheddar. This is mozzarella. See, the cheese you add don't really matter. 
You know what matter is how well you season that sauce. That's what really, really matters in life. And this is some creamy melt triple cheddar. Okay, this is more than enough cheese, trust me. Okay, mix all that together real good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And you know, I've been saved a long time, but they say, I've been, I've been following Jesus, but they say if you stir it and it sound like that, you on your way. Let me, I'm going to put a little more sauce in here. Matter of fact, I'm going to put all this in here. Now, I've been, I've been walking with Jesus a long time, so I don't really know what they be talking about. You know, I don't know. Okay, come on. Then I got me a little oven dish. Right? And then we're going to take the mac and cheese and we're going to pour this into this dish like this. Okay? Smooth it out a little bit. Thank you. Then, you know, we top it with the remaining amounts of cheese. I don't think you can have too much cheese in the macaroni if you ask me personally. I just don't think you can have too much. So, and then you know, people have their preferences. Some people don't like the shredded. They like the stuff in the block. I don't really care what you use. It don't really bother me none, okay? Just use something and get it in there, okay? All right. Let me see. I think I may have a little more. Let me see if I got something else in the refrigerator. I doubt I do. Let me just look. Well, look at God. Fancy shredded Mexican style cheese. Sharp cheddar, Monterey Jack, Asadero, and Queso Blanco from Trader Joe's. Might as well use this as well. Okay? Look at God. I'm telling you, everything you need. It's in the house. Okay? It's in the house. See that? All right. Into the oven this goes. Cornbread smells amazing. All right. Can we cook our fish? Because our, our um, power grains, they just about done. So let me get the oil ready for the fish and get the fish battered up because that ain't going to take but a second. Okay? Can we do that? No matter what you say, we're going to do it anyway. Okay? Come on. We're going to put um, a skillet on. Cast iron, Doc. Cast iron. And then you get whatever oil you got. <laughs> what I say, get whatever oil you got. Whatever grease you like. This is a uh, canola oil. But you know why I got canola? Because it's on sale. If your canola ain't on sale, don't use canola. If the vegetable is on sale, hello, we use it. Vegetable. If corn is on sale, what we use it? Corn, okay? I want you to use whatever you got. I am not here to judge, lest ye be judged. But in the same manner that you judge, you too shall also be judged. It's in the Bible. Look it up. Okay, I'm going to put my cornmeal in here. Now let me tell you something. I got to I got to school you real fast because some of y'all don't be knowing what y'all be doing, and I feel like the Lord sent me here to tell you a uh, couple things. All right, now we're gonna use this grease to fry this fish. In the black household, there are two types of greases. The first grease is chicken grease. The other grease is fish grease. You ever heard somebody say they hot as fish grease? We finna make some fish grease right now. Ain't but two types of greases 
in the black household. And you got to know how to interchange them and use them. I'm here to tell you. If you're taking notes, let's go. Okay, you got two containers. One container is fish grease. One container is chicken grease. All new grease can be chicken grease or it can be fish grease. Once you use the chicken grease, you can reuse chicken grease for chicken grease. You can also reuse chicken grease for fish grease. But once you use chicken grease for fish grease, it stay fish grease. You see what I'm saying? Once you, once you fry the fish in the fish grease, you can no longer use the fish grease to fry the chicken. This is a black household rule that everybody knows. Now, what can you do with chicken grease and what can you do with fish grease? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Chicken grease, you can saute. You can cook anything you want with chicken grease. You cook chicken. You can fry pork chops. You can even make cube steak in chicken grease and reuse the chicken grease for something else again, all right? Once you use your fish grease to fry catfish, perch, uh, a buffalo, whatever you got, you can only use the fish grease for fish-related, seafood-related like scallops, fried shrimp, stuff like that. Salmon croquette. Use your fish grease for your salmon cakes, okay? Use a little fish grease on your crab cake, but that's it. You got that? I hope so, okay? Okay, come on. We're going to put the grease in here. This, this is new grease. And what I told you, new grease can be fish grease or new grease can be chicken grease. Okay, but in this case, hold on, let me take my cornbread out. Because last time I burnt my cornbread on live, and the devil is busy tonight as well. Okay, last time I burnt my cornbread on live, but I'm not burning no cornbread tonight. Come on, don't play with me. Get out of my face. Do not play with me. What we doing? Not burning no cornbread tonight, Doc. Huh? Come on. For our buttermilk cornbread. Now, this is what you got to do when your, when your cornbread come out of the oven. You take you a little piece of butter like this here. And you got to do this. Grandma would put her hand on her hip. Don't ask me why she did that. I don't know. She put her hand on her hip and she stand here and she swirl this butter around this hot cornbread like this. All while singing a hymn. Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hope to God. It tastes better when you sing a hymn over it. Some of y'all don't know hymns. You got to get to know you a hymn, Doc. Okay. Cornbread is glistening. Let me see if I can show you in the camera what I'm talking about. Okay, golden brown like this here. See that? See what we got? Huh? <laughs> Y'all singing it too? This hot. I'm about to burn my hand. Put this down. Okay. Okay. Uh, behind me, I got my fish grease getting hot. Now, Grandma used to keep a plastic, a paper bag, a paper sack in the refrigerator, also known as the ice box. She used to. And uh, what she used to do is uh, every time she fry fish, she put out that paper sack. If she had one for fish, she had one for chicken. That paper sack, let me see, I was born in 81. That paper sack was probably from the Omnis or the Dominics from about 74, 75. The flour in the bottom of that had been around about 20 some years, okay? 
Don't try that today. You will die from toe cancer, or eyebrow cancer, something like that. But back then, it didn't kill you. You feel me? That's how grandma did. She would have two sacks, and she put that one, pull that one sack out, and you don't, you don't throw it away. I'm talking about. It had little crevices of black pepper from the March in '63 was up in there. Okay. Now let me make sure I cut this down. I don't want to burn. Hold on, I'm about to burn something, child. Ooh, cut that down. That's hot. Okay. All right. Personal protective equipment. This is our fish. See how we seasoned it and let it marinate in that buttermilk from somebody's farm. <laughs> But this got all the seasoning in the world on here. So really, ain't no way this not going to taste that good. I, I believe this is going to be mighty delicious. Do you believe? <laughs> Whose report will you believe? Okay. Then you got to close it up like this here. And I mean, you got to go to shaking, Doc. You got to go to shaking. Okay. Now this is cornmeal. Grandma never called it cornmeal. She just called it meal. Okay. You knew what it was. Oh yeah, we find meal. You just supposed to know that mean cornmeal. Okay. You supposed to know. I'm sure these collard greens about ready, huh? Let me put this fish on, and I'm gonna release the pressure of these collard greens. Hold on. Stop praying now, saints. Okay, see how that's real coated in the crevices like that? Come on, put that in the grease. Yes, Lord. And I cut that grease down because I don't want to cook my fish fast where the outside be crispy and the inside don't be done all the way. I don't like that, okay? That's also why I cut the fish in that diagonal like that as well because, uh, you know, it's, it's it'll cook more evenly that way. All right, what we got? Fried catfish. Yes. I can put about four pieces in here. Don't overcrowd the pan. Y'all be putting nine pieces of catfish in here. Talk about some. Want to inbox me? Want to DM me on Instagram? Talk about some. It didn't come out right. I I watched your video and it didn't come out right. What did I do wrong? Well, why you put nine pieces of catfish in the pan like that? Who told you to do that? Let me look at my macaroni and cheese. Hold on. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm going to take the steam off this. I'm going to take the steam. <laughs> I'm gonna take the steam off of this. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm gonna bring it over here in front of us. Hold on. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. Easy as pie. Nothing to it. Y'all worried about nothing. Okay, so we put these in. 
for, um, I think like 25, we did this before, and I think 25 minutes was plenty before. We put them in, hold on. This time I put them in for, uh, I don't know, 30. Yeah, like 30 minutes. And that should be just enough time to get them nice and tender. Oh, yeah. And the turkey tail's been done fell apart. Look at that. Look at that. See that? That's plenty of time. Now, we didn't season this. This don't have no seasoning in it. So please do not eat this. Talk about some. We finna eat good. Not yet. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay? Now, let's season these. And I season mine at the end of cooking. I don't season mine at the beginning. Okay? You can season yours whenever you want to season yours. But I season mine at the end. Collard greens are about a certain mouthfeel. And I'm sorry, you don't get that mouthfeel from um, the smoked turkey by itself. So I do throw a little oil. I throw a little oil in mine. Let me flip my fish, hold on. All right, I put a little oil in mine. Okay, let's put some seasoning. I put garlic powder in mine. That's all I got left. A little onion powder. You're going to need you uh, some Cajun seasoning. All right. I put a little Cajun in mine, okay? A little Cajun. That's probably a little more than a little, but you know. You want to taste it. Yes. To cut the bitterness, I put a little sugar in mine, okay? To cut that bitterness out. Uh, let me tell you what else I put in. Hold on, let me tell you what else I put in mine. Now the key to a good pot of greens is half chicken and half beef bouillon. So what I'm gonna put in is I have a chicken bouillon. It's like cooking it in stock. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm gonna put in a little bit of chicken bouillon and then I have some beef bouillon that I can't open. Hold on. There you go. And if you want to, you know, use the powder, I just, they don't have the powder. I'm having a hard time finding the powder in the beef like I used to have it before. So I'm just going to use, you know, in the jar. It's fine. It'll all work out, okay? And then mix this all up together real good. All right, mix it all up real good, real nice. And uh, I think what happens if you season in the beginning, because I always get a lot of questions. Why do you season your collard greens at the end? Well, if you season in the beginning, you, you tend to lose some of the seasoning, and you got to go back and then re-season, right? So then what happens is like, if you cook them down, get them tender, get your, your smoked meat all dissolved and all juicy, and then you season up the end, you lose no seasoning whatsoever, okay? So let me see. And I'm telling you, and a lot of y'all have followed my recipe for collard greens, and you can, you can vouch that the recipe is on point. Perfect. trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. Okay? All right. Let me get my um, catfish out of the grease. Because it's ready. Back in the day, 
Grandma used to put the catfish on paper tie, I mean on a newspaper. That's because the newspaper we used to use won't kill you, but don't do that today. Put it on paper tie. I'll show you. I'll show you. Look at that. I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you. Look at that. Hmm? I'll show you. I know you're wondering, oh my God, did he burn it? Okay. Then we have, let me look at, see what's going on with this macaroni and cheese. All right, my friend Brian is here. Brian! Let me go get Brian, because I know I could taste test it, but I want y'all to see Brian taste test it. So you get the full effect. Let me go get him. He's upstairs in one of these rooms. Hold the line, talk amongst yourself. Brian Davis. Yeah. Come down so you can taste this. On the camera. Okay, Brian's coming down. He was upstairs. Yeah, my friend Brian, um, you will notice him from stories from, when you see him, if you have the stories from my grandmother's cookbook, he's in the book. Meanwhile, I'm gonna pull this macaroni and cheese out of the oven. What up, what up? I'm just at the tail end. Ooh, it smells so good down here. Yeah, of course. Oh Lord, you got, oof. Here we go. Okay, so this is, I'm gonna try to show you guys without burning myself. This is the mac and cheese that I just pulled out or the other, and you can still hear, you listen, shh. Right, you can hear crackling, okay? Show sure is, just snap, crack, and pop. Okay, so I'm gonna give Brian a little bit of everything, that way he can decide, you know. This is the, um, come on in the camera so they can see you. you. He's not camera shy. Yes, and I am. No, you're not. I really am. They can't see you. No. Oh. There you go. You have to get in all those cameras. Hey, people. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm. That is cheesy. It's supposed to be cheesy. Yes. It's supposed to be. Oh, let me get um, a fork. Let's stop them. Okay, there's, stop. A, there's a piece of mac and cheese. Hold on. Here's a little piece of here's a piece of catfish. Just a little bit, just for a taste. Can I fry? Okay. Yeah. Well, I I call myself cutting them down to size. They're huge. These were whole fillets. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna give Brian some of everything. Hold on. Ooh. Hold on. I gotta get you cornbread. That's hot. And the greens. Yeah, they're behind. Oh, this is. So Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me get the cornbread. Mm. What you drinking today? A Diet Coke. A Diet Coke? Yes. Did you, did you do what we talked about earlier? Is it just Diet Coke? Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to live a little today. Yeah, no, no. Still kind of, you know, post-op on the surgery. I'm so excited. Ah, I'm so excited. Ah, I'm so excited. So this is the cornbread I made uh, without any um. <laughs> no, look, I made it without. I, I said, "Oh my God, I don't have any buttermilk." So I made some buttermilk. Uh -huh. Like I made it up, like right then and there, with like um, 
I made it with um, half and half. Yeah. And a little apple cider vinegar. Oh, and then some collard greens. What the people saying? It's too many cameras. Oh, what's in the collard greens? Smoked, um, smoked turkey tail. Oh my gosh! I don't ever. Th I don't think I've ever had turkey tail. You never had turkey tail? I never had turkey tail. Okay, so Ryan has never had turkey tail. I'm gonna, like. I'm gonna give him some. But I'm trying to find you a good juicy piece of turkey tail. Turkey tail. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're okay. It almost got me. Okay, so I got Brian collard green, mac and cheese, cornbread, Fish. and catfish. All right, y'all ready? Y'all ready for the taste test? What should I get first? Whatever, whatever your heart desires. Whatever my heart. Well, I always go for the cheese with mac. How you say it? Cheese with mac with a little bit of mac. Oh, God. Mmm, bro. <laughs> you put your whole foot in that. Thanks. With a little ankle socks and all. Thanks. To keep your uh, that's toes um, moisturized. That's um, mac and cheese. Yeah. Tastes good mm. turkey tail. So if you, if you tell people this, how will the turkey tail taste? Since Brian's never had turkey tail. It's going to taste like chicken. Mm, yeah, I can't put this up. Tastes like chicken. It'll taste like. It'll taste like. People say raccoon tastes like chicken. I don't know about that. Nah, I've never had raccoon and don't want it. Mmm. It's really good flavor. It's really chewy. I don't want um. Raccoon. But no, the turkey tail. It's really chewy. Great flavor. Oh, I need a fork. I need a knife. Mmm. Let's have a piece of the fish. Thoughts so far? Oh, it's absolutely fucking delicious. Did oh, you sorry. have the, did you have the collard greens with the cornbread together in one bite? That's normally I didn't. Do That's normally how you do it. You eat the cornbread with the with, with the, the collard greens with a piece. Mmm. There's a little bit of sweetness in it. It's my cup of sugar that I eyeball. It's so good. It's like bites the flavor that normally otherwise comes with collard greens. I um, it's my um, my uh, I had to eyeball. I couldn't find a measuring cup, mm -hmm. so I was like, oh. It came out really good for you to just eyeball it. Do you want hot sauce? I have hot sauce. I don't even need no sauce. Mm -hmm. And see, the thing about sauce. the mac and cheese, although, is the pasta is not overcooked. It's not mushy mm -hmm. because you take the pasta out when it's al dente. Oh, it's hot. Yeah, you take the pasta out when it's al dente. That way, when you put it in the oven, you're not like overcooking it mm -hmm. more and more. So, there we go. No, this is really good. Like, really, really good. So, there you have it. This is a uh, mm, little something my grandmother, the collard greens are really good. Mm. A little something my grandmother would make. Can I take this on the plane? I can wrap it up. I don't know. Do, I thought it was just liquids. Um, Technically, food is not a liquid. I guess you could take food on the plane. I'm gonna try it. But Atlanta's too much, though. They be on that like. Oh, and we we at Atlanta pride ourselves in TSA. Like, okay, I don't know. all right, girl. Hmm. Yeah, this is good. All right, Cheers. so this is it, y'all. You see me? You see me make it's the food. Everything. You see me do it one one ingredient at a time until we came up with. Oh oh. Are you starting a lot from scratch? No. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Oh, this is scratch made. No no no. You started the live from when you when you were making it from scratch. Yes. Okay. Yes. They saw me for the last hour. They saw me do all of it. Bit by bit by bit. Mm -hmm. So, all right, folks, listen. Um, if you need a copy of the cookbooks, go to shopdariuscooks.com um, and you get a copy of the cookbooks there. Recipes like this, you know where they are on my website, dariuscooks.tv. Two things I want to tell you is I always do. Oh, I'm going to let you finish. Food is my life. Hmm. Life is my food. 
Until next time, I want to wish you a happy cooking. Yes. From my heart to yours. Bye, y'all. For night. <laughs> Delicious. Hold on, I got to figure out. <laughs>